So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple just released iPadOS 15.4 Beta 5 to all developers to try out and see if we got anything new. Now again, we're on the Beta 5, which means we're getting closer and closer to that RC edition and ideally by March 8th, which is when that spring event is supposed to happen. So one week from today, we should be getting the public release for everybody to take advantage of and actually put on their iOS, iPadOS, macOS, tvOS, all the different Apple devices that you would want to to get to 15.4 and higher. So with this beta 5 update, we're probably gonna get a lot of bug fixes, some performance enhancements, making sure that the battery life is ready to go for the public, just to make sure that it is ready and stable. So when everybody does download it over the air, that they're right into 15.4 and they can use all those new awesome features that 15.4 brings. Cause again, we've been going from beta one all the way to beta five now, and we've gotten universal control. We've gotten the new find my feature, the new prompt. We've gotten a bunch of new things like the face ID on iOS as well. So there's a bunch of new things with 15.4, which we're gonna talk about in a holistic video later on. But for this one, we're just gonna talk about the new beta 5 update and see exactly what we got going on. So let's find out. So let's get right into this video everybody. I'm going to pull up the iPad screen right here so you guys can see exactly what's going on and what I'm doing on the iPad itself. But the first thing we're going to touch on is the actual size of the build number, right? So I actually took a screenshot of it so I can show everybody exactly what's going on. So if we go into right here, so iPadOS 15.4 developer beta 5, we're looking at about 260 megabytes for an update. So give yourself about half a gig in order to get this installed correctly, making sure that there's nothing wrong with the install, because that has happened to me in the past, especially with this 128 gig iPad Pro. I'm usually constantly deleting footage off the iPad Pro to make sure there's enough space for other things I need to go in here. So, and I have run into the situation where I actually needed to release more space in order to get an update installed. So make sure that doesn't happen to you. But again, iPadOS 15.4 developer beta five is now released to all developers. And then in terms of build number, if we go into the settings, go into the about section, you can see that we're still on 15.4, but the new moniker is now 19E5241 lowercase a. So as you guys know, as we get closer and closer to that public release, as we get closer to that RC edition, is when we're actually gonna see that letter moniker go away. So the next update should be the RC, which ideally will come out March 8th, and then probably March 15th is when the public is gonna actually get access to this 15.4 beta update, or at that point, it won't be a beta anymore. And the reason I think Apple's gonna wait until March 15th is because they're gonna announce new products on March 8th, and then normally after Apple announces a new product, it takes about a week for those things to actually get, start getting shipped out to all actual users, and that's when the 15.4 update is actually gonna be released to everybody else. So if they do get a new device, like a new iPad Air 5, which should be coming out on March 8th, they'll get it with 15.4 pre-installed and ready to go. So in terms of what's new with this specific update, there really wasn't much at all, right? With 15.4 overall, we got a bunch of new features, especially for the iPad Pro or the iPads in general. For iPadOS, we got universal control, which is a feature that Apple's been touting since June of last year. It took them about seven months to finally get it out into developers' hands, and so far, universal control has been absolutely amazing. Like, the demo has been awesome. I'm still figuring out exactly how it's gonna change my workflow because it really has changed the way I'm using my macOS computer because I have an M1 MacBook Air, and then I also have my M1 iPad Pro, with my iPad Pro being the center hub and the control center for everything else around me. And then we also got some new prompts with AirTags. So when you do set up a brand new AirTag, you get that new screen that lets you know like, hey, if you're using an AirTag, make sure you're putting it on your own things and it's not to be used to track other people or track other people's items. And that is considered a crime in most countries around the world. So make sure that you're using it for the right reason. And again, you have to agree to that new prompt. So again, Apple doesn't really stand liable if something does happen and somebody uses it for a malicious reason, which Apple just has to cover themselves in every situation, especially when their products are as good as they are, right? So for things like AirTags, being able to track somebody else is probably pretty dangerous. So having that prompt there is gonna help Apple have a little bit more peace of mind knowing that they're not responsible of their products being used maliciously, which again, is kind of like a cop out. And then also with this 15.4 update for iOS and iPadOS and macOS, we got a bunch of new emojis. So if we go into, let's say a normal notes app, we go into the emojis, we got over 30 new emojis, which some of them are actually pretty cool and pretty nice, right? So if we scroll through here, like this one's new over here, which is cool to see. The salute one is nice, which is also there. The melting face, right? These are all brand new ones, which Apple did release. I know that people love their emojis, but Apple is releasing 30 new ones for everybody to take advantage of. And then also what I wanna walk everybody through is the actual release notes. So this is the release notes that was sent out to all the developers when they do install it. And you can see that for the most part, it's all just things that are known issues inside of iPadOS 15.4 at this point. So you see that we have, so signing in to an iPad is limited to apps in this beta. You have some health app issues, some home issues, which again is pairing you know smart home devices with HomeKit and things like that. iTunes has an issue with purchasing or downloading content again from the iTunes store messages, a conversation transcript won't scroll after viewing a photo and quick look, which I haven't personally dealt with, but it's something that has been happening. 
And then lastly, if you are using iOS 15.4, that emergency SOS thing where you press the hold button five times in a row and it automatically calls emergency services, that has been disabled for all users outside of India until they fix a bug. So those are all things to keep in mind when going through these beta programs because while they're still in beta, there are still issues that are persisting and that's why it's still in the beta format. But again, nothing has been detrimental on how I use my iPad with this beta software. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about battery life. So if we go into settings, let's go into the battery life, see what we've been doing over the last 10 days. We got about an hour and a half of screen on time, about 15 minutes of screen off time. If we go on a day like Monday, you see that we have three hours and 15 minutes of screen on time with 100% battery use. So that is a terrible day of battery. And Apple needs to do a better job of getting the battery life to a place where it needs to be, which is that six to 10 hour mark. And right now you can see three hours and 15 minutes. On a day like Tuesday, we did about 125% battery, only got three hours of screen on time. On a day like Saturday, we took a, a lot of battery, we was plugged in all day, but again, you can see that the battery life just hasn't been amazing. So two and a half hours of screen on time with almost 100% charge, it's just not gonna cut it. So iPad battery life needs to get a little bit better. If not, Samsung's gonna take advantage of these issues and you know that Tab S8 Ultra looks pretty crazy. So I might be picking one of those up. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want me to review one of those or maybe compare it to the iPad and to see how it all works out. But from a battery standpoint, it could be better. But overall, performance has been great, battery life needs a little bit of work, but all the features that Apple's been kind of highlighting, so the Face ID, universal control, new emojis, air tags, new tracking notification support, some iCloud keychain support and things like that, those are all great updates that are gonna make our lives a little bit easier with iPadOS. And again, what makes these products so unique is that even after you buy these products, they still continue to get better. Now, never buy something for the promise that it's gonna do something tomorrow, but be aware that Apple's products seem to get better over time. Universal control is just another example of Apple doing that. But that's gonna do it for this view. Let's get out of here and go to the normal view. So as you guys saw, there weren't too many new actual tangible differences with this update. Again, we're on the beta five and the next one should be the RC edition. So I think from a timeline standpoint, we should be getting the RC edition probably March 8th. I know I'm contradicting myself from the intro a little bit earlier, but then probably a week from March 8th is when we're gonna get that public release. Cause I think Apple's gonna release probably the new iPhone SE, probably the new iPad Air 5, as well as some other iMacs and MacBooks and things like that. So normally Apple announces them, let's say on March 8th, and then one week later is when we're gonna actually start getting shipment of those new products, which is gonna have 15.4 on the iOS side and on the iPad OS side with those new devices. So keep that in mind in terms of when to expect these new live updates and these updates to hit the entire public. I'm thinking two weeks from today, but Apple could surprise us and just drop the public update instead of the RC update on March 8th. And then you guys also saw with the actual notes that Apple released with this beta update, there's still also known issues inside of iPadOS 15.4, but none of them are detrimental to your everyday use case. So if you guys do want to update to it and you haven't yet and you've made it this far, you know, you might as well jump on it and try things like universal control, try the new face ID unlock and things like that. But that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. So if you guys enjoyed, leave a comment down below. Leave a little dolphin, actually, if you guys did make it to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out channel sponsor Paperlike. And until next time, everybody, again, I'm thinking maybe a week, maybe two weeks until we get this public release, but, but I'm out of here.